Hello again. Today we're going to take a look at the update that uh, Adobe have just dropped on Camera Raw. So for Lightroom users, Photoshop users, when you bring a raw file into Photoshop or Lightroom, uh, we've got some new tools in our masking. So what I'm going to do is run through those new tools because I think they're really good, okay? Um, yes, there are better ways of doing things, but as far as simple and effective goes, these are really good. Okay, so I'm just going to open a couple of files. So if we just go up to File, Open, and here's a couple that I prepared earlier. Okay, so these are raw files, and when we open them in Photoshop, by default, they will come into Adobe Camera Raw. Okay, uh, for Lightroom users, exactly the same. What we're going to be looking at is our masking tool. Okay, so here's what it looks like in Lightroom. Masking tool. And in here, if we click on masking, there's this new option called landscape. And that's what we're going to take a look at today, this landscape option. Okay, so if I click on landscape, what it's going to do is analyze the image and it's going to divide it up into sections. So as you can see here, it's detecting. Okay, and now we've got these options. We've got a sky selection, we've got architecture, vegetation, water, and artificial ground. Okay, now depending on the image, it will find different things. Um, I believe there's up to seven different um, masking options. So this one here, I've picked this photo because it's got a few of the different options in there. And what we can do is we can select all of them. Okay, and which is what I'm going to do in this case. I'll show you a couple of other options where we can do a little bit more individual. But by selecting all of those options, it will now show you here that you've created five separate masks. And then we're just going to click Create. And what that has essentially done is it's selected those areas so we can adjust them individually. Now, if we have a quick look at this image, this, the footpath, okay? The footpath to me is a little bit green. It's got a bit of a green tint to it. So if we click on our artificial ground mask, Okay, it's just going to select the footpath. Okay, and it does a pretty good job. Not perfect, but it does a pretty good job. Okay, um, and then now that we've selected just that footpath, if I come down to my color tab, down to tint, and I can take some of that green out of it and dial it up towards magenta, and now it's starting to make it look a bit more gray. Okay, so it's taking the green out of the image and getting it a little bit more natural looking. Okay. Um, same with the water, okay? So if we select our water mask, okay, it's just selected the water. So from there, again, we have all our options. So we can, if we want to bring up the exposure of the water, we can make the water brighter, okay? If we want to just take out the highlights from the water, we can bring down the highlights on the water and it's just selecting that area, okay? So really good little option that they've added into, into Adobe Camera Raw selects those areas and then we get our masking options. Now, yeah, the vegetation in this one, there's not a lot of vegetation, but as you can see, it's actually picked out the trees. It's done a pretty good job of picking out those trees. But this is where it becomes a really good tool because what we can do, so if we click on the architecture, for example, you can see that it's selected our buildings. It's done a pretty good job of our buildings. Okay, so once again, if we just wanna make them a little bit brighter, we can just brighten them up a little. Okay, um, and the sky, if we have a look at our sky, this is where we start to run into some issues. Okay, so I don't know how well you'll see it on YouTube, but the sky selection has taken a fair bit of those buildings into its selection. Okay, but what we can do, just as an example, I'm just going to bring up the exposure of our sky a little bit. And it's kind of, it's brightening up the tops of the buildings as well, which is what we don't want. Okay, so as an example, you know, this isn't an editing session by any means, uh, but just to show you, using that sky select, it's not perfect. But what we can do now is if we subtract, so if we come up to subtract, so we're on our sky layer, we're just going to hit subtract. And once again, we still have those options. So if I select landscape again, and what I want to do is subtract the architecture. And then if I just select architecture and then hit create, what that's going to do now is going to, it's going to take away the architecture from that sky selection. So it's going to make a much, 
um, a much better mask. So now it really is just affecting the sky and not so much of the buildings. Okay, like I said, it's not perfect. It's still kind of got a few little areas that it's missed. Um, but again, we can just go to select our sky again and we can subtract even more. And if we want to grab our brush tool, okay, make our brush nice and small and we want to subtract that part of the building. Okay, so if it's there's parts that it's missed, we can just use a brush and we can subtract certain parts of the image. Okay, so lots of different options here. We can add more in, we can subtract lots of different options. Okay, now I recommend you don't make your sky quite that bright. It's one of those tools where, yes, it's good, but don't push it beyond its limits. Okay, if we start to push things too far, it gets a bit unrealistic and unnatural. Um, so as I say with all of my editing, little tweaks, okay, just do little adjustments, okay, we could probably change the colour of the sky, warm it up a little bit, okay, lots of good options in there though, so this is, it's a very handy addition that they've added. So I'll leave that one for now, and what we'll do is we'll move on to our next image, because this is where it can start to run into some issues, okay, so again, this is a raw file, very flat raw file to tell the truth. I might just make it look a little bit nicer. Uh, we can do all of our normal adjustments in here. Okay, we can bring down our highlights and lift our shadows and you know, sort of do whatever we want in here. Uh, I'm just going to edit this just very quickly to make it look a little bit nicer. Okay, so we can do a very basic edit. And now if we come up to our masking tool, okay, we're applying those masks on top of the edits that we've already done. Okay, now this is where it starts to fall apart a bit. If I select landscape, now this time we don't have any architecture, we don't have any man-made roads, so the selection's going to be a little bit different. Okay, so now this time there's, it's only selected four things. So we've still got our sky, our vegetation, our water, but now we've got natural ground as well. So it's actually detected that it isn't a man-made road or a footpath, it's detected that it's natural ground. But as you can see, if I go between water and natural ground, it gets a bit confused, okay? It gets a bit confused. But if we just wanna change our sky and our vegetation, we can just select those two. We don't have to select all of them. We can just check the boxes that we want to. And as you can see, with the vegetation one, it's picking up the shadows, the vegetation in the reflection, okay? So what we can do, again, let's just uh, create, let's select our sky and vegetation, create the masks, now, if we go to our vegetation, for example, okay, and we want to take it out of the reflection. The reflection's fine. We don't need to do anything to that. We just, again, go up to subtract, um, just grab brush, okay, and with our brush, we can just paint out that reflection. So now it's just affecting the trees, okay? If we want to zoom in, we can just hold the control or the command key, and we can zoom in, and, you know, we might want to take it away from all those, the mangrove roots, Okay, so we can add in or subtract different areas. Okay, again, I might just take it away from there. Okay, so now it's done a selection of just the foliage. Okay, so as I was saying before, this is where things can fall apart because if we just wanna brighten up the foliage, for example, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to zoom back in so we can really see what it's doing. If we wanna increase the exposure, as you can see, it's not a perfect mask. Now, you wouldn't do this to a real image, but just as an example, you can see that it's done a reasonably good job with the mask, but it's not perfect. Um, so with something like this, you'd probably just want to bring up your shadows a little bit, and then it's only going to target the darker areas. Okay, so if I take my... If I, I don't take your shadows up to 100%, but if we take them up to 100%, we can see that it's just selecting the leaves and the foliage, okay? Um, so yeah, good, good options. Okay. Same with the sky. You'll probably find that when you've got a selection like this, the sky isn't perfect. Um, but let's just, you know, as an example, let's darken down our sky a little bit. Let's take those highlights down even more. I'm just going to push this beyond its limits and we'll start to see that it's, it's done an okay job, but it's not perfect. Okay. So as long as you don't push your sliders too far, keep your adjustments subtle, um, it does a reasonably good job, okay? It's quick and easy, it's quick and it's efficient, okay? And then finally, our last one, 
So this one, it, it did get a bit confused here. So let's let's just run the landscape again. Okay, so it's done its selection. Now, if we click on the sky selection, it's it struggled with the with the amount of leaves and the the branches in the tree. Okay, vegetation does a better job. If we just click vegetation, okay, it's it's done a better job. Okay. Uh, water again does a pretty good job. Artificial ground again. I'm just going to untick those ones. Artificial ground. It's only covered half of the pier. Okay, so it's good, but it's not a hundred percent accurate. It's a good starting point. Okay, so use it for small adjustments. Okay, so I'm just going to tick them all again. Hit create. Okay, so an image like this, you might just want to lift your shadows just a little bit. Okay, so select your vegetation. Um, lift the shadows just a little bit. You wouldn't want to try and bring down your sky and lift your shadows. You know, subtle adjustments are good. Okay, um, but yeah, that's it. That, that, that's the new masking tools in Lightroom and Photoshop or Adobe Camera Raw, and they are quite good. Okay, so masking tools, select landscape, and it will create those certain areas for you. And so it, it is a bit hit and miss, so give it a try, have a bit of a practice with it. Just don't push those sliders all the way, okay? Um, that's it for this video. I know I say it all the time, but hopefully next time I see you, I will be out live. Um, I am planning to do a live stream very soon. Um, things have started to quieten down now that the, the school holidays and Easter's finished. And until then, um, thank you again for watching and hopefully I'll see you soon. Thank <laughs> you.